Welcome to Cross Platform Podcast, where we discuss how to solve productivity problems across platforms. I'm Augusto Pinot. And I'm Mark Elwix. And today we are going to be talking about tags and tagging and how we tag or not tag stuff in our systems and on different parts. So let's start with what we do with tags. Do you use yeah, them tag? or do you don't yeah, use them? I, mm, I do use them. Uh, it's unfortunate. Tags are one of those things that are kind of application tied. Um, it depends on how well the application or how the application actually implements tagging as an available function to determine what you can and can't do with them. But in a nutshell, before we dig into that part of it, tagging is applying some sort of a textual marker to a piece of information so that you can go back and find that piece of information and other information like it based on that marker. So let's say, for example, you have a collection of notes that are recipes uh, and you tag all of them as recipes, but you may also have a tag that says you have Mexican recipes. So you can look at and say, I don't want to have to search through all the text of these recipes. I'm going to use the two tags to find everything that is Mexican recipes. So that's basically the way tags work. And they've been around from forever in an analog standpoint. You tag things in notebooks with you know file folders and all. But in the digital space, they're really useful and very powerful in conjunction with a lot of the concepts from search as well as a lot of base database concepts, being able to filter and sort. Uh, but again, it goes back to depending on the tool you're using and how they implement tags is really going to dictate what you can and you can't do with tags with your information. And unfortunately, there is no standard strategy that you can apply because they all vary. Uh, it, I'll use, for example, one of the worst taggers out there. Um, it does a horrible job of tagging in my book. And it's OneNote. <laughs> OneNote is terrible at tagging. Whereas tools like Evernote and tools that give you um, a good note, for example, tools that allow you to apply defined tags, create a master list of tags and apply those tags consistently and repeatedly, those work really well. Right. So I use tags a lot. I don't use them enough. I should use them more because of the benefit that you can get out of them. And again, it's really dependent on, on the tool. So where, where do you use tags? So, so let me go one step back and add to your explanation how I tend to explain or used to explain tags. And I get back to people to what they call categories. Okay? And how did you do mm -hmm. categories and how do you categorize things? You know, when you categorize the physical world on your file cabinets or, you know, you go to boxes and you put outside of the box, okay, this box, this, box, this folder has, you know, this kind of papers. The problem in the physical world is that normally you are limited to a kind, right? a, one mm -hmm. tag, one category. When you come now to the digital world, you can put multiples. That allows you to do exactly what you said. Hey, show me mm -hmm. all my recipes that are Mexican and that I can do in less than 15 minutes. And broop, that will cut the list or filter the list very, mm -hmm. very quick. And because of that, make it something very powerful because then before, you know, you get the instructions, how to configure my cell phone. Okay, should that be on the configuration or cell phone or iPhone or where? As like one category. Mm -hmm. Now you can tag it if it's a digital file. Okay, configuration of phone, Apple, iPhone, whatever you want. Mm -hmm. So that allows you to find the information much simpler and faster. Why? Because you can use the technical terminology, but also you can use what it's really going to bring back to memory. Because the, 
one of the issues is how are you going to search for that digital file or that digital thing when you search? Because you may give me right now, again, I, I, the show notes. Well, obviously, this is cross-platform episode 81. Right now, that seems completely logical to me and file there. Okay. But when I'm going to prepare for the next show, I'm really going to think cross platform 81, or I'm going to look for tags, or even that the title of the app is sent mm -hmm. in the tags. Okay. That internal way we were calling it was tagging. So those two names, okay, as I file to all this, okay, I put them as a tag. So I can find them as a tag. So I can find them as tagging. I can find them as cross platform 81. This gives you a really great way to find things. That said, that create a second problem that now you with a bazillion of possibilities. And a lot of possibilities tend to freeze any process. Okay? When you have too many possibilities, you freeze the process. That then comes to what I tend to advise when I coach is create a list of core tags. What I call core mm -hmm. tags is tags that you know you are going to use as consistently as possible. So platform is one. Why? Because it could apply to many things. And it's much easier to say, okay, show the files that contain the tag cross-platform and start thinking on way to search inside of that that if I try to find tagging. So and that is one of the wonderful advantage of using this multiple categories to use these tagging systems. But you need to go and take the time and the effort to create that core list. And on the times on the Pan Pilots, some moons back, okay, I remember people saying, well, one of the issues with the Pan Pilot is that you are limited to 15 categories. And I tell people that's not a bad thing. If you if you have more than fifteen core categories, can you really manage them? Okay. And I talk about my tagging. Okay. My tagging, I don't have a tag for my wife for my each one of my. Why? Because if you send me right now something that relates my family, okay, I have one tag family. I can I may use sub tags. But when I'm looking, if I'm looking for, oh, where is the birthday party for my son? The first tag that I search is family because that will already filter a bunch of information. Now I can look into this because also the issue with tags is how brilliant were you when you do the tags? And I don't know about you, but in my case, there are days that I can play in this game full of the game. And there are other days that what come is something, you know, close to an orangutan hit the keyboard. And when that happened, God knows what tag okay, mm -hmm. I used that day. And that is the reason those 15 tags are always there. And that's the first one that I put. Because in the worst case scenario, if I misspell tagging when I create that mm -hmm. tag, I will find it as cross-platform. It may take me longer, but it will show up. So that's a long way to answer your question. But When we think about, I mean, people really got familiar with tagging, one, through categories. So you assign mm -hmm. categories and lists, but they got more familiar with tagging when hashtagging came in to be heavily with social media. Because if you have like an Instagram post or a Facebook post or a LinkedIn post, and you put a bunch of hashtags in there, it gives people a, a somewhat uniform way to find other content where you may not know what that content is, but you know it's related to the tag. And that's where be, working with the tools that we're talking about, you can have unstructured information that gets an artificial structure based on the tags that you apply to it. But I agree with you. The more you use tags, the more important tag management becomes. And here's a good example. If you have an event, let's say, for example, uh, I don't know, Mother's Day. It could be Mother's Day. 
It could be Mother's Day 2022. It could be Mother's Day dinner. It could be Mother's Day gifts. Why is that important? Because I may want to see everything that's related to gifts. I may want to see everything that's related to gifts in 2022. Well, that's going to cross different pieces of information. And it's being able to provide those marker structures to help you narrow down this massive pool of information that you have down to a smaller set that you can then parse more intelligently is where the value of tags come into play. And I always encourage people, I say, look, if you're going to use tags, use tags in conjunction with search. Make sure that the tool you're using allows you to search within a filtered set of records based on a tag. And that's, that's really more database than type of structure than anything else. But if you can narrow your records down to Mother's Day and then search for, you know, maybe a restaurant name or something like that, it's going to give you a much faster result. You don't necessarily need to create a tag for that restaurant name unless you are referencing a lot of records for it. There are tags that I have found not only are related to dates and times and, and categories, but I often will assign tags by people too. So for example, in a task list, if I'm creating a task list for an organization and I have meetings where I'll have to go and sit and sit with someone, I will put in tags with that person's name on it that who I need to review this with or who I need to update. And you may have multiple ones. It could be an update and here's the person. It could be a uh, approval and here's a person. Those combinations, again, allow me to narrow that set of data in, and information into something much more actionable. But here becomes the challenge of, of tags. And I'm going to ask you a question here. When you manage your tags, do you create a pool of tags that are all equal? Or do you create a hierarchy of tags with, with master and sub tags and you know, parent and children and things like that? The first criteria is where did you match on my initial 15? Okay, that's family, that's okay. company. Okay, that is uh, some of the place I volunteer and my biggest clients. Okay, those are, okay. So, and if you are my biggest client, my biggest client get taxed twice, okay, gets taxed for my company and get tagged on their own, mm -hmm. okay? That is the first line of defense, okay? That's where I, as soon as you send me this, this is, okay, cross-platform. Mm -hmm. okay? As soon as I answer in, in base of this big list, then I look at this doc and say, what do I want to remember this by? And then I don't mind. I can get, you know, creative and doesn't matter. But those... 10 to 15 things, the master list, that master list is replicated everywhere that I can use a tag. Why? Because then I can don't need to think. I, for example, don't have a tag called home, okay? Because that my brain will not I have family, okay? So everything that is related to the home goes into family, okay? Why? Because mm -hmm. when you look at my tags, it may have the address, it may have house, it may have something else. So it's not what I have done over the years with this list is think, how do you think? For example, I don't have computer tag. Mm -hmm. Why? Because I live on an iPad. Been living on an iPad since 2011. Okay. If right. I put tag computer, okay, that thing is never, ever going to be mm -hmm. found. Okay. So that is important. How do you use that terminology? Okay, because if you said desktop, okay, and you don't have a desktop anymore, okay, the probabilities mm -hmm. that when you're searching, you're going to type desktop are slim to none. So you may have the information, but you will not be able to find it. So like many things in productivity, tax is one of those things that you hope to do from the intelligent part of you to the not mm -hmm. intelligent part of you. And what I mean by that is you want to not think on what right now, but if I 
pull this information in a moment that I'm not on my best, that I'm tired, that I'm whatever. Okay. Well, how I'm going to think on this document. And that's our tags that are important. They don't need mm -hmm. to be primary, but they need to be there because that's how you are going to think when you try to pull them out very, very quick. Yeah, tags are one of those things that there is a lot of capability within systems, and it doesn't have to be just base information. It doesn't have to be just notes. Uh, one of the things that I always recommend for people if they're, for example, creating... I do a lot of work in the Microsoft space, and if we're using SharePoint and we're creating document libraries, there's no reason to create a nested hierarchy of folders within that space. Use tags, use categories. That gives you the capability of creating virtual folders based on filtered criteria on demand. So, and I do this quite a bit. I'll go through if it's if it's information related to a particular project um, and I have a bunch of procedures, I may go through and tag those procedures for the project just for the duration of that project. When I'm done, I may pull that tag off because there's no reason to have to go back and look for it. And tags don't have to be permanent. Like I just said, I think that's one of the hangups that a lot of people get into. They will go in and they will assign tags to something and assume those tags can never come off or never be altered. And I think that's a fatal mistake because again, digital means dynamic. You can alter this stuff. You should alter it to use it the way you need it at any given time. Um, I am a big one for using the hierarchical tag structure. I like that approach. It does take a little while to map out and not many tools are very good at managing a hierarchical tag structure. Um, Evernote's a good one for it. They they have a nice way of doing it. Uh, Notion it's is very, fantastic. Very good SharePoint is not particularly good at it. it. It becomes a bit of a challenge to create. You wind up with lots of lookups of tag lists. You know, where can you pull from? And, and it's just more complicated than it needs to be. But the benefit you get, especially as the volume of information you are tagging increases, the more important it is to unify that tag structure and be consistent with it. And heaven forbid, if you have more than one people, person using that tag structure, coming to consensus, agreement, and auditing to make sure tags are being used consistently and reliable, reliably is key. Because the only thing worse than untagged content is mistagged content. And and that is the reason, even, even if you share that, that is the reason I, I extend that fixed high level that I is where I always start. Because if you are, are sharing something, and let's say I went and tag it one way, and you went and tag it another, fine, I may use your tag it or not. But what's going to happen when you call me and say, you remember that document we were working? What the tag did we put on it? If I use the same structure, the probabilities that I will find it is very high. I will start, oh, what it is, cross-platform. And then, okay, let me see now. These are all the files I have under cross-platform. And then I can start working with that. So I am a big proponent that even when you share with people, you keep using that structure. And as you said, remember, this is for you and don't need to be permanent. There is a bunch of tags that happen, you know, our daughter is going to school. So right now there is a ton of information coming in and out, project and stuff. Okay? They are all tagged. Family, Alicia, this is my, my daughter, and then the high school. Okay. So mm -hmm. we can find it either way, but how I'm always going to start? Family. And then that will you know, short the list and then continue and down from there. Yeah. And that's one of the things that I, I like in tools that have centralized tagging management, the ability to drill down through those tags and get the, the results of those tags through mm -hmm. the hierarchical structure. 
So you have your top 15 in your example. You click on family, you have the sub tags. And when you click on the sub tag, you can then go see everything that has that sub tag. Right. That's really useful in my book. That gets you to where you need to go. Where this kind of goes off the rails is when we fail to be consistent in our process of tagging though. And I, and I have found that I am just as bad at this as anybody else is where Me content too. will get thrown in there. And here's the worst part. You go in, you put a piece of content into your system. You go to tag it and you can't remember if you have a relevant tag for it. So you create another one. And now you wind up with multiple tags that are not necessarily identical, but they're, they're like paternal twins. I mean, they, they same parent, same mom, but they don't look the same. And that's what makes them kind of useless. Because now you've got to go through, not the paternal twins are useless. Do not take it that way. Do not at me. Um, the tags themselves have got to be unique and consistent. And I think, again, that's where you go back to that central structure. So learn the tool, learn what you can do with a tag in the system, and then define your tags accordingly around it then you have a much better chance. Uh, task management. Let's focus on task management for a little bit. Because I think that's one of the big places that you can put tags to, to work for yourself in. Uh, often we will go through and we'll have, you know, you create a project and you have all the tasks in the project and all. But if you're using a tool like Notion, for example, one of the common strategies is you create one big task list and just everything goes in there. If it's something that needs to get done, it gets chucked in there. And you use, in its case, what it refers to as properties, the same way with as they would if they were tags. And you mark the things that way. So that way you can then go back and create what are called views to say, show me everything tagged for this project. Show me everything for this client, you know, sorted by date. Those are ways that you can leverage that from a database type of perspective without having to go through and create this artificial hierarchy of folders or pages after pages after pages trying to get things organized. The other thing I like about it too is it can become your navigation system. Most good tools allow you to apply a tag through a URL. So, for example, if you're using like Todoist and you click on a tag in Todoist and it pulls back all the tasks that have that tag assigned, if you look at the address bar, you'll see that that tag has been made part of the address. Well, you can bookmark that. Now you can shortcut your way back into that page, back into that content, back into that filtered output. You can take that link and put it into another page and create a, a navigational menu for yourself. Those are powerful. Those are powerful ways to take advantage of what you can do with tagging if, again, you're creating it in a consistent, reliable manner. Um, the most important exercise I think you can do before you ever start using your tool, though, is do what you've done, do what I'm in the process of right now, which is remap out all your tags, top to bottom. And it's good to say it's, it sounds like well, that's a lot of work. No, 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 no. This was a lot of work because I lose a lot of documents. You know, when you were saying I am the first one, no, no, I am the first one. I just start sooner. The reason I have this list of core tags is because what you said, there is applications who allows you to have hundreds. There is applications mm -hmm. who allows you to have one. There is applications who allows you to have inside of them or, or not. So what was... My thinking was, okay, how can I use this consistently? Because what I found at some point was I have a series of tags for application A and a different one to application B and a different one for application C. So when I was looking for stuff, it took forever because I went from application A to application B and started thinking, okay, how did I call home in this application? Well, I don't use home. Okay, so if I'm looking at that, I will never find it. Now that I have that core categories, it's easy because I can look, okay, where is that thing 
my daughter sent me, I can start with family on any application and it will filter that just to that. And from there I can go depending on the application, some add more and some add less. And you mentioned an application at the beginning called Good Notes that we have talked about in this show. I love the Good Notes, and um, they are now with a, a better version for Windows and Android. I think the Android works on certain Samsung tablets for now, but I'm very excited. But one Good Notes is one of those applications that don't use, that, at least not officially, not yet. So what I have done when I add documents in there, I handwrite the tag. Mm -hmm. okay. Why? Because GoodNotes will be able to search even my awful handwriting. Okay. So I can put the add family or I can put add cross platform and search and it will look for that on the cover. So well, the reason I'm mentioning this is because not every application will allow you to do that, but that does that you cannot get creative okay there right. are things that are not there are files that are not well maybe you can add the tag on the name so that way you can search depending on the machine that you are and find all those tags so there are many ways to get creative but in order to get creative you first in my opinion need to be consistent mm -hmm. yeah i i think if you go in situations where you're using a tool that doesn't have a native tagging capability, uh, I think you're going to struggle a little bit more. Yes, you can do the workarounds like you described. That's completely feasible. Uh, there is no easy way to centrally manage them and apply them, which is, I think, one of the, one of the biggest hangups of it is that you can't apply them easily. Uh, Samsung Notes for Digital Link does have a tag option that you can apply tags out of a pool of tags to your notes and then look up things based on the tag, which I like. A tag pool, I don't think is as effective as a, a hierarchical structure because you can't have, you know, parent child tags. You just have this blob of tags that you have to manage. Uh, but in either case, if you have the ability to search for a unique string, specifically something that starts with a non-alphanumeric character that makes it easy to identify, i.e. a hashtag, for example, that's a great way to kind of work around a lack of a tagging capability. Mm -hmm. Because if you can search for hashtag something, well, then you just make sure you're consistent about not using hashtag whatever <laughs> as part of your regular notes. That's where unfortunately one note falls on its face it can't search for hashtag something it doesn't recognize hashtag as an alphanumeric character so the search doesn't work you have to jury rig the search that's where i think that these kinds of tools struggle is when they don't recognize the value of tags now granted one note applied its own concept of tagging where you can apply a graphical tag that has a name to it, a color, and that's all fine. But it doesn't transfer between versions of its application particularly well. So that's another fall on its face. And you know, I can just complain about OneNote's tagging forever because I think tagging is that important. So let's say, for example, someone's listened to us and they said, oh, all right, I get it. I buy what you're selling. Tagging's really important. How do I start? What path would you put somebody on as the first steps to an effective tagging implementation? The first one will be that list, that list that I have mentioned. What is your core? If you can only use that category, where are those buckets? Okay, And how many can you get by? Do you really need 30? Do you need five? And that depends person to person. And that is the first thing I do when I work with clients. And the second thing is, how are you really calling them? Why? Because when you do the first list, you're going to do, well, work computer. Okay. You know, and you will look wife. Well, really, when you are going to search, are you going to search wife or are you going to use her name? Okay. And 
That depends. Or you're going to call her, or you're going to search honey. Okay, and it's fine. The, what your tags are your tags. But if you put wife, okay, and your wife name is Jane, and you start typing every time Jane, the only thing that that will produce is frustration. Then you need to work really with those titles. Because I said early on the show, I don't have a computer list. I don't have a computer. I don't think on the computer doesn't compute. I have an iPad. So the my tag is iPad, okay? That is how I call my iPads, okay? Or the specific one. But the first one is the iPads in general. Then goes to the specific okay. one if there is a reason for that. In, and that is the first two step. The third step is to start testing them. So start, forget about the backlog, forget about the things you have not seen in the past, done in the past, and start moving forward. And what I tell to people is forget about the back, the, the, the past. And when you find that dog and say, okay, I'm now doing taxes for 2023, and you need to start looking for those documents, as you search and find, tag them. But don't spend three weekends tagging thousands of files to discover I use one of those thousand files and I spend yeah. 24 hours. Go forward. And as you search for those files, when you find them, tag them. But don't spend the time to do all that. At least that's my opinion. Yeah, I think at the tool level, and this is just another anecdote piece, Look for tools that give you the ability to bulk edit tags, to select multiple items and apply a tag to multiple items at the same time. If you have to go in and edit each item individually to get tags applied, you're just not going to do it. I'll be honest. You're going to, it's going to fall by the wayside because it's too much labor. So too much labor. How I suggest people get started is one, create an outline of those tags. Sit down with the information you have and start to create that outline. Look at, you know, take representative samplings of the items and say, how would I tag this thing? How would I tag this thing? And start to look at where you accumulate. Then once you've gathered this list of tags and it's going to get big and unwieldy, see if you can start to group them together. Can you consolidate multiple tags into one that meet, that meet the needs of all of those different little versions? Because you're right. You don't want too many variants. A tag's job is not to find a single piece of information. A tag's job is to narrow the scope of the search. The search. That's all. It's, it's not the same as an ID number. It's not the same as a serial number or a, you know, a unique code. It is literally designed just to narrow it down. Uh, it, I'll use one of my favorite, you know, car examples. Tags are blue cars, sedans, four-wheel drive. Those are all tags that you would apply to a car lot to say, I only want to see the blue sedans that have four-wheel drive. That's not going to pick out a single car for you, but it's going to eliminate everything that isn't those. Create your structures in a way to say, and your tags in a way to say that they're going to be usable. So, for example, I like applying tags that have specifics to clients and projects and things like that, but also types of work. So, when I think about it for myself, I want to find all the network installations. Well, this was a support thing I did for a network installation for this client at this location. Well, the other parts may be irrelevant if I'm trying to look for inf information about network installations. That's how that knowledge becomes available. And that's how I say, create your tags that way. Don't, don't expect their job to be to find the information. Their job is to eliminate what you right. don't want. So tagging is a big deal. Um, it's pretty straightforward. And honestly, I think it should be one of the primary go, no go features in any solution that you put together and any tool that you evaluate. Uh, if you choose a tool that doesn't have a tagging capability, 
honestly, you might as well just get yourself a paper notebook in my book. And, and even when you look at the paper notebook, okay, and we have covered this on cross-platform, we don't have not covered in cross-platform, we have covered it in Productivity Cast um, about the bullet journal. The bullet journal, one of the things that it came to do was try to bring that tagging to the physical world in your notebook. So for the people who are listening to us who are interested on the tagging, they say, you know what, but I have a notebook, I don't know. There is certain things on the bullet journal that will never apply in my world. But I need to agree that some of those tagging can be translated for that. Because how many times on that notebook have you been looking? I know I write it down somewhere in these pages yeah. that you can add it to that index and say, hey, cross-platform, page 24. But I will go back to my same advice. A star, if you're going to do that on your the first 10 things on that index should be that standard tag. What I would like to see, and this is when we talk about future state and where I'd love to see things go, I'd love to see things like chat GPT and AI be able to take your master list of tags and go through all of your content and apply your tags. Mm -hmm. You provide the definition. It provides the backend intelligence and the brute force work to go through and review all the content. And then you have a useful tag collection to say, show me everything that's a Mexican recipe. And you may have 30 of them in there. Where this really would be useful then is because if you have that structure of a uniform tagging system, and some sort of an AI engine that's smart enough to apply the tags, you can then just capture content into it. As long as that content is detailed enough so that the AI engine could parse it and understand what it is and then accurately apply the tags, that would be amazing. That's going to take out a huge chunk of processing work that you have to do. I would love to see that happen. I would not be surprised if we see tools start to work in that direction i'm just not sure how they're going to implement it and how how effective that will be until i actually get my hands on it no but that will be very very interesting as you said so anything else you have for that's about for it. tagging taggings like i said tagging is pretty straightforward if anybody has any specific strategies they apply to tagging or unique things they tag I would love, love to hear to about hear it. I, yeah, let's let's hear about it. Come over to the uh, Professional Productivity Club. Leave some comments. Tell us, how are you using tagging? How has it been helpful? How has it been problematic? Uh, the more insights we have for that, the better off things go. Correct. So follow us. Where you like to listen to podcasts, like us or subscribe to us and leave us a review. You can also interact with us on personalproductivity.club. There is a page for cross-platform there. So we are Gusto Pinot on our Go Weeks. See you next time on your favorite device. Thank you.